Hi, <laughs> I'm back. Um, I thought I would make my follow-up video. Um, it has been, I wrote it down, two weeks and two days. So I'm at day 16 right now after my surgery. And as a reminder, refresher, I had the latissimus dorsi flap bilateral mastectomy. Um, what a journey it's been. Uh, you might actually recognize me if you've seen my other videos as having worn this exact same shirt in the first video. I will explain that in a little bit. Um, not that anybody cares what I'm wearing, but you know. Um, but I wanted to make this video to go over a whole bunch of things about the surgery and what to prepare for and what to expect, at least from my perspective, and things that are important and um, make you aware of things that you're going to be you have to become very familiar with. Um, so I'm going to be referencing my fun little list here, so don't mind if I keep on looking down. Um, first of all, I think the most important thing are the highs and the lows. Um, I'm doing this today because today's a good day for me. <laughs> it has not been an easy go for me. Not so much because of the surgery. There was more personal things that happened in my life um, pretty quickly after the surgery happened um, with a relationship of mine that really had me take a turn for the worst emotionally. And I think that really affected my recovery overall. So... You know, I'm two weeks out and still only here, whereas two weeks out you could be, you know, running around and doing great and everything could be wonderful in your life. Um, I am still at my parents' house right now. My first video was at my house and I am still two weeks later at my parents' house because I am not ready to go home yet um, for a number of reasons. <laughs> but, so I'm still here and I still have the original bag that I packed. Um, two weeks ago to come that I was only planning on staying here for three days at tops. Um, so, um, you know, the highs and the lows are there anyway, whether it's something happening in your life or not. Um, you've had a massive surgery. Actually, I was told it's not a major surgery, it's an extensive surgery. Somebody differentiated it for me. It's not a major surgery, it's an extensive surgery, and remember that as well. Um, a big part of your life is going to change, but it's not necessarily going to change for the worst. I'm going to be really honest. I said in my last video, I'm not going to show my breasts because I work in a school and I can't be flashing my boobs online. So I can't show you mine, but if you didn't know any different, you'd think they were the same. I mean, they look identical to what I had before, and I haven't had my implants put in yet. I still only have the tissue expanders in. I still have two sets of drains, which I will show you, but um, the breasts themselves, having used the latissimus dorsi flap, look identical, which is pretty amazing, and I've been showing everybody because I'm proud of them. So I'm not shy anymore about <laughs> flashing them to my friends, and they all want to see because everyone's going to be very interested in that. Um, but the highs and the lows were um, something that I prepared for. Um, I'm a school psychologist. I, you know, I'm in the mental health field. I understand how things work. I knew that there were going to be highs and lows. Um, I think for me, unfortunately, this experience, there were way more lows than there should have had to be because um, of what happened, not because of my surgery. And I'm frustrated by that, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I move on and I try to stay forward and positive and today is the first day that I showered and washed my own hair and my mom dried it for me but you know today's the first day I'm wearing makeup today's the first day that I'm going to try to really um you know restart my life if you will um that's my story that's what happened to me but if you have someone and you have the support that you need there you can be great and I've had the most amazing support I could ever have asked for for my family and my friends visiting calls texts i mean i was a botanical garden this room you know for the two weeks people sending me things and i have more chocolate than i know what to do with and i love chocolate and unfortunately because of the emotional stuff that had happened i didn't have much of an appetite but now that i'm feeling better i have a feeling that the chocolate's going to disappear i'm sidetracking um okay so the highs and the lows were the important thing that i want you to just know that they're going to be there there's going to be days that you're going to feel like crap and there's going to be days where you're like this is not so bad um 
it's a tight feeling. You're not going to be comfortable. You're just not. You might not be in pain. I'm not necessarily in pain anymore, but you are not going to be comfortable. They mentioned the iron bra feeling, and that's exactly what it is for me. I feel like I have a very tight bra on, although it doesn't feel like a bra because I feel like I don't have any support. So while here and here, I feel like I have a something extremely tight pulling on it, here, I feel like I am falling forward, and that's a big thing that in physical therapy they talk about having to remember to keep your back straight and keep your posture back and keep this forward because your gut feeling is going to be to go forward. This is pretty much the size I was before. I was not much bigger, and I'm still swollen, so nothing has changed in that way for me. So I'm working on my posture, and I'm working on um, the stretches that the physical therapist gave me, which at this point is literally it's just putting the arms out, um, putting the arms forward, and then the up, down, and then the up, which is easy. I can do it, no problem. My range of motion is good. It feels very tight, and it feels really good to stretch it, and that's what they want to do. You need to be stretching these muscles that are not used to being stretched and give them room to grow. At least that's what I think that they want you to do. Um, okay, so that's kind of where I am um, for the beginning part here. In terms of things that you're going to need or that you're going to want or that I'm going to recommend you getting, I have quite a list here. And the first ones being one of these fancy little pillows. I got the most amazing care package from friends of mine before my surgery and she made it up using things that other women who have gone through this told her to get. And these were them and she got me too. And these things don't leave my side and they're squishy and they have a little like, you know, I don't even know what would be in there and little beads or something, whatever. Um, they're comfortable and they maneuver and they fold and they bend and they squeeze and, you know, and I, you put them in the seatbelt and the seatbelt, you know, comes across your chest. When I was just having my, my hair being dried, I sat here like this to put pressure so that my breasts weren't just hanging there. I use them as pillows. I, I just bring them everywhere I go. Um. There are a ton of these types of pillows out there. These were just given to me and they have been my lifesaver and everybody knows and the colors are just very me too so I love the pattern. Um, I don't even know where they got them from. I'm sure that you can get them anywhere but you're going to want soft maneuverable little pillows to be able to squeeze in certain places when you're sleeping which is a whole other story because sleeping is still not great and that stinks because I like to sleep. Um, so the um, pillows here are very important. Um, the other thing that I'm going to stress, which other people will as well, is going to be, oh, it's probably going to be backwards on this, stool softener, colace, Miralax, something, something, either, both, together. I started the stool softener, colace, the second day in the hospital, took two a day for uh, a week and a week and a half and um, by the time I came home I was taking Miralax every night. I am normally very normal. I have no problems with my dig digestive system. Um, the medicine that you're on is going to mess you up and the woman that I had spoken to prior said that her pains from her stomach were worse than her pains from her breast and I was not about to deal with that because I knew what I was in store for. Um, these things saved me. You need to do this. You need to make sure that you are keeping yourself regular by taking these daily, every day, drinking them, swallowing them, whatever the pills you get, make sure you do that because I keep hearing and reading about women who have stomach pains who just are really losing their minds and I couldn't imagine. So those saved me and I'm going to make these probably my second, next to these pillows, this is my second thing that's the most important to make sure that you have. Um... I have a bunch of medicines here. I have my little collection of things that, that you're going to be coming home with. Um, ibuprofen. Um, they put me on Valium. I was taking uh, Dilaudid and then the Keflex for the anti, um, uh, for the infections. Um, I'm it's called brain dead. I can't think of what this is called, but it's for infections. I'm sure I'll blurt it out in five minutes when I remember the word. Um, but they have me on Dilaudid um, every four hours for, I guess, as long as I needed it. Um, 
My parents were concerned that I was going to get addicted to it. I don't know why. I don't have an addictive personality. They got concerned. I kind of just cut it off and then had withdrawal. Um, apparently Dilaudid is one of the hardest drugs to withdraw from and um, heads up to you when you take your narcotic make sure you get off slowly which is stupid I don't know why I didn't but make sure that you reduce yourself slowly because my withdrawal symptoms were not good and it was it was a um, it was a it was a bad bad day for me the Valium um, they give you as a um, um, a muscle relaxer um, because you're going to be possibly having spasms and things like that. It's also an anxiety drug so I think it does a little bit of both. It helps you sleep. You take it at night. Um, this is kind of at your prerogative I guess how you use this um, if you want to use this or not. Um, for me I'm using it a little bit for here and a little bit for here right now um, to keep me kind of level and um, which is good because I am still having spasms and it does help me sleep and I've been on a good plan these days I happen to be a night owl now that I'm not working and um, if I take my ibuprofen which I now take at night if I take uh, my ibuprofen around 12 or 1 I'm able to get the full six hours of sleep without waking up in the middle of the night because when I first left the hospital I was there for four days I was getting up at 2, 5, and 6 um, every single night to take all of my medicine because you don't want to miss that overlap. I mean, you don't want to miss that gap. You want to keep your medicine um, overlapping because you don't want to have the pain. I, I didn't ever have the pain, but I was warned not to because um, it could be pretty bad. So I kept my pain really under control by every... I mean, I had an amazing app. Oh, that's another thing that I should talk about. I don't my, my phone. I have an app that I got that was free online from my uh, um, from the app store on my on my iPhone and it was just like pill reminder and I threw in what pills I'm taking how often I need to be they be taking them and an alarm goes off at what time I had to take them and it was great because you lose track of time and um, that really helps me as well but so all the medicines you're gonna have them all lined up and you're gonna want someone to be helping you monitoring your medicines and making sure you're take you're, you're writing down what you're taking when you're taking and keeping that somehow organized um, the other thing that I was warned of was um, taking your temperature every day. My physical therapist actually told me about that. Um, every single day, take your temperature because the second that temperature goes up, that means that there's an infection. And you want to make sure that you can get on an antibiotic, which is what these are, antibiotics. I knew I'd get it. Um, the Keflex. Oh boy, brain dead. Um, you want to take your temperature because the minute the um, you, you notice a fever, you want to jump right on that and make sure that you take care of any infection that you might be getting immediately. So every morning I wake up and take my temperature. It's very easy. The nurse that comes to your house will do that. Um, they do that in the hospital, obviously. So that's really important as well. Um, I have one of these fun things that I talked about. Um, I forget what it's called. My mom had to remind me a stripometer or stepometer or something. It's for breathing and it's um, super important and I'm actually still using it because I find myself still being short of breath. When you wake up, you're going to be short of breath. It's going to be hard for you to take a deep breath. You have a lot of trauma in there. There's a lot of pressure and um, you're going to have a really hard time. And I'm out of breath just talking as much as I am right now. And um, all you do is you take it and you have to suck in. And you hold it and you make sure, I know it looks pretty bad imagination going wild right now but um, you take it and you see how long you can hold it up there for and um, you're expanding your chest and this is to make sure that you a are expanding your chest and getting that area to be um, expanded and also to keep fluid out of your lungs because you don't want to get pneumonia from these small shallow breaths and lying around a lot so that's really important um, pillows people are gonna tell you I mean you can see I don't know if it'll be I mean like I have like a thousand pillows on my bed and I have a body pillow here that's been really great and then behind me is the number one thing that I should have said is the recliner that actually is not normally in this room it's my sisters they brought it up for me just for um, while for my surgery for me to have and I live in that I don't sleep in it it's not comfortable to sleep in and it hurts my back so I don't sleep in it a lot of women do and it helps them I do not but I get from my bed and crawl right into my recliner and it's just really great to kind of sit back. It gives you the elevation that you need without lying down which hurts, without sitting up that hurts. It just, it's really perfect and I would recommend getting a recliner of some sort if you can. Um, I didn't think I was going to nor did I think I would need it and in the end it's where I spend most of my time. Hence the depression trying to get out of that routine. Um, 
in terms of the drains, you know, I went over all of that in my drain video that I made. Um, I have two drains still, so I have the two. I have one that is still on my side here, um, and then obviously one on the other side. I took a shower this morning and didn't feel the need to use the ace bandage anymore, so I just had a lanyard from my old school and just tied them right on there, and it was super easy, no big deal whatsoever, and then decided just to keep them on there. Um, I'm not allowed to wear, to wear a bra because of my the type of surgery that I had. They have the nipples. They want them to heal. Um, the nipples are really painful re recently, which I think is a good thing. I think it's because they're healing and getting some different types of sensations, um, but they are painful, and that's annoying. Um, while I'm in a motion, I'll also show you my scars for my lap flap, just so you know. If I can get it, that's it right there. That's These are the holes from the dreams that I had. Um, this is actually just still a mark from the marker that I just haven't been able to wash off. But that's my scar. Um, it's still got bandages on it. Um, it goes to about almost midway to my back. But it's, um, it's flat. And there's two of them. He took one from either side. My surgeon is extremely well known. This is his specialty. I would, you know, make sure that you're going to someone who specializes in this because it's pretty intense surgery. Um, there's my second one. Um, it looks big. It is big. It is exactly on my bra slash bathing suit line, and it's flat. And I have another um, scar on my back from a back surgery I previously had years and years ago, um, which I'm unfazed by. But um, it's a flat. It's a flat scar, and it's pretty. And I'm pretty sure from what I've seen of his after pictures, it's not going to be very noticeable and it doesn't bother me. The back hurts a little bit, it's achy, um, but it's healing and that's what's going to happen. My drains are the thing that I want out the most. I am really losing my mind with these drains. I'm hoping by Wednesday they'll take them out. They are, um, they're actually empty and I, I did that this morning at like, I don't know, 8 o'clock and they're still empty so that's a really good sign. Um, so those were the drains. Um, the ace bandage that I used, like I showed you in my video, um, that really helped me just clip it right on there if you have more than two drains. If you have two drains, use a lanyard, it's not a big deal. Four drains, this was much more convenient. Um, I had the box of um, just alcohol, little alcohol things. Just the little mini packets are all you need. You rip them open, you use them, you strip your things, you throw them out. So these are super easy and convenient to use as well. Um, I had some really cool nurses in my hospital and they left me with all kinds of goodies. Um, the cups that they use that I showed is, you know, where you where you empty your drains. Um, I don't even know what this is, just an absorbent pad. They gave me lots of absorbent pads. These are actually really great and I've used them. Um, they're drain sponges and they might give them to you in the hospital as well. Um, they are regular um, uh, gauze pads that have a hole in them with a slit so that you can slide one up and around the drain and then tape it and then the drain comes out the middle of it. I've actually still been using them because one of my drains has a um, has a oh my goodness stitch. I got stitches. One of the stitches of my drains is um, long and stabs me and it is so annoying and I can't cut it so I've been using those to keep on there just to keep that one stitch away from my body. So I mean they're really convenient. Um, lots of like tape that they give you. Um, she gave me more bottles of me. She, she really filled me up so um, call me if you need something because I, I got it here and I don't think I'll be needing it again. Um, I got as part of my care package a journal. I recommend it. Um, I write in it depending on the day. Um, what's interesting is you can tell the before um, I wrote starting a week before of just how I was feeling and then you get into the during and um, it gets a little bit sloppier, <laughs> a little bit more difficult to read because I'm on drugs and it um, doesn't always make much sense but I want to use it, I want to help others, I want to remember this experience and details that I know I'm just not going to remember which is partly why I'm doing this video now also. Um, so the journal really helped. Obviously zip ups, hoodies, um, button downs. Um, I found, I did buy a bunch of tank tops that I could slide up and then kind of just tuck my arms in. I can wear t-shirts now. I mean, I don't have, I mean, I can lift my arms. It hurts. I had to lift my arm to do the fan and it definitely hurt. I wouldn't do it 
often, and that's the next thing I'm working on in physical therapy next week. Um, but I could just throw my shirt over my head and then slide my arms in. So if you have a baggy shirt, you know, that's doable also. But the button downs, especially pajamas, it's just so much easier. So I would really recommend that. Um, the latest thing for me really is the tissue expanders. That's all that I'm feeling in here right now, and they're painful. I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm on a really great site on Facebook for prophylactic mastectomies, and I mentioned in here, you know, anybody, what do you think about that? And they all kind of agree that they just suck. Um, I feel them. They're, they're this bizarre, foreign, plastic thing in your breast um, that kind of sits there and moves around, and if I were to lean over... Since I can't wear support, if I lean over, things move and then, you know, and I massage it out. That's probably the most painful thing right now. I'll get them out in three months when I get my expanders. Nope, when I get my implants. I'm not getting expanded. I don't believe that wasn't my goal. I'm not looking to get any bigger. And I think he thinks, my plastic surgeon thinks that I am a good enough place where um, once I heal, I'll be able to, in about three months, get my implants, which I am anxiously awaiting. Um... So, I can't really think about much else that I would want to talk about. Um, support, support, support. Make sure you have people to help you. Um, make sure you have people to talk to. The cards, the, the people that reach out, reached out to me, I can't even begin to say what that meant to me. The cards that I received that kept me going um, in more than one way, not just for my physical issues, but for the more emotional issues that I had to incur, um, which I had a hard time with. Um, but, you know, keep yourself busy. I got some really fun books and, um, an awesome friend of mine. So if you know someone going through this, an awesome friend of mine got me a month subscription to Netflix so I can watch movies and, um, different episodes of TV shows that I didn't used to watch. And that's been really fun. I got into, um, I got into a series that I didn't watch before that I've been obsessed with now. And that's been helping take my time, get outside, take walks. That's my newest thing. Eat protein, eat, eat, eat. I was not eating, so I was weak, so then I wasn't feeling good, so then I would have drops in blood sugar, so then I would get upset. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a constant cycle. Um, so for the psychological part of it, keep yourself eating, keep yourself moving, keep yourself motivated, keep yourself outside, keep and happy, and um, surround yourself with people who are going to help you. Um, I'm really lucky that I had that because I don't think I could have done this. I know I could not, not have done this without them, especially my parents because they don't normally thought that their 30, almost 32-year-old daughter was going to be living back in their house for two weeks. Um, the thought of going home is scary to me, and um, I'm having a hard time with it right now, but I'm moving on and um, trying to live it a day at a time. Um, find a support group if you can. There is one on Facebook that's really great. I don't want to say the name of it. Um, if you search, you'll find it, and it's very private, and it is the most amazing support group that I've ever um, really come across. The women are just so great and they're there for you for the good, the bad, and the ugly and the funny because they're <laughs> funny women. Um, I think that's it. I did also just bring my log just to show the log of your drains, you know, and how to keep track of it and everything. Bring this with you to your doctor's appointments because they're going to want to see um, every day what time and what the drainage was so they can see whether there's been a decrease or not. Um, and, um, yeah, I think that's it. Let's see. Pulleys, recliner, pillows, get help, stratometer. I think that's what that's called. Uh, ace bandage, pillows, um, time to do something. Give yourself time to heal. Don't plan something huge the week of your surgery. Don't plan something huge the week after or two weeks after your surgery. I know there are parents and mothers who have to. Do the best you can to get help because you will not be able to and the more you push yourself I mean my my physical therapist's orders prior to the surgery was rule number one do nothing you lay on your butt and you do nothing and you let your body heal because this is a process and it's going to take time and if you start out the process of healing and somehow mess that up you're not going to heal the right way and this is your life and these are your boobs and you're going to want them to be good um, so I guess that's it. Um, I don't know if I'll have a follow-up of this or not. Maybe after I get my implants, maybe if something drastic changes, maybe if these stupid tissue expanders stop hurting me, I can come on and say, yay, they stopped hurting me. You know, like I said, I'm only at um, a little over two weeks now. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Um, but 
Um, that's really it for me. I'm glad I did this because it actually made me feel really good. It's a cathartic thing for me um, during times because I was having a real rough morning. Um, and um, this helps me. So maybe it'll help you. I hope so. I don't know. Um, you can contact me if you need anything ever. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on, obviously, YouTube. So you can write me there and we can connect if you want. Um, I would love to help anybody who has questions. I'm not the authority on anything. I'm just someone who went through it um, and had ups and downs with it. And I'm realistic. And I'll tell you how it is. And um, I'll do the best to motivate you to get you through it, too. So if you have gone through it, then I wish you a speedy recovery. If you have not gone through it, the anticipation is by far the worst part of it, I promise. No, I don't promise. The recovery is difficult, but the anticipation sucks and is, is hard also in the not knowing. One of my biggest fears was how I was going to feel inside, if I was going to have this like feeling of emptiness, like a physical feeling of emptiness, and in fact you feel a physical feeling of fullness. You are extremely full and tight, and there's nothing missing in there at all, at least for me, for my type of surgery. Um, I don't feel like any less of a woman because my boobs look awesome. Um, so... Um, you know, I think you're making the right choice if this is why you're doing this and, um, make sure that you feel comfortable with your surgeons. I love, 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 loved my surgeons, both of them. I was so happy to use them. I couldn't wait to see them again. They, I saw them the morning of, I love my follow-ups with them. I just think they're great people and I trust them wholeheartedly and that's really important. So trust your surgeons. Um, and don't do anything that you don't want to do. Make sure that you are comfortable with all your decisions and do all your research. Now I feel like I'm being preachy. Sorry. Um, yes, so I'm going to end this now because this is way longer than I planned on talking. But my computer keeps shutting off on me. But um, like I said, if you have any questions, you can always reach out. You can always comment below, and I will answer any questions that I possibly can for you. And I wish you good luck in your healing and your recovery and your beautiful new boobs. And um, it's a sisterhood. It really is. You have the breast cancer sister. I didn't have breast cancer. Um, this is all prophylactic. You have the breast cancer sisterhood, which is such a strong, tight community. And there is no doubt a prophylactic sisterhood as well who um, are just incredible. And I am so thankful that I have found them um, besides my normal friends and family who I love. So thank you also. Uh, okay, that's it. Good luck. Bye.